Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a red fox in pastels. Now this tutorial is going to focus predominantly on how to draw fur, but before we get to that I do have to put in the background first. Now the reason why I like to do this is because the subject is in front, that background should look like it's behind that animal. So I want to make sure that when I come to add the details on the edge of that animal, that the fur overlaps the background. If I draw the fox first and then add the background, I'm going to have to draw around all of those details and it can look a little bit staged. I want this to look natural, so I do prefer to do the background first. Now once I had completed the background, when I work on a subject, I will always start with the eye first. Now this is where the main expression and emotion stems from, so I do want to make sure that I've got the eyes accurate before I look at any part of the fur. So you can see here that already I'm paying attention to the lights and the darks. Now this is the main consideration at this stage. I'm not focusing necessarily on the exact colour because I can adjust that later on with some light layers of glazing and just putting that hint of colour in the iris once I've got my lights and darks established. Now good contrast is something that I talk about in all tutorials. You want your darks nice and dark and you want your highlights really bright. If you're working on the eye and you've got a really bright highlight, a bright reflection at the top, then it's always a good idea to put that in with a white pencil first and then you can darken it up should you need to. The next thing that I like to do is work on the fur around the eye. Now for this I am using my pan pastels. The main reason for that is they have a really good vibrant colour saturation. So when you're working on fur that's as punchy as this with those beautiful bright oranges, the pan pastels work really well. It can be tricky to ensure that that colour saturation stays throughout the layering process, especially as you work with your darks. Now there you saw a sheet of paper where I was experimenting with different pencils and showing my patron members how to avoid muddying up of those colours. And this is something that can happen very quickly when working with pastels, especially when we're trying to draw this sort of fur colour. But it can be avoided, as long as we don't use specific pencils, especially when we're making things darker, then that is going to be ensuring that your colour saturation and those vibrant colours maintain and they don't end up getting muddy. The way that we mix with our darks and we build up those layers is crucial for this sort of fur colouring. Now if that is of interest and you would like to see more of that in depth then I do have this tutorial available on Patreon. It's all in real time from start to finish and I don't have any sections that I've sped up or cut out. I'm doing a voiceover while I'm drawing so every single process is explained thoroughly. So if this is of interest then I will link my Patreon in the description below. Now that I've got more of the fur in place you can really see how much of a layering process it's been. I have to make sure that I'm building up lots of layers before I even consider those brightest highlights that are sitting on the very top. If I draw those in too soon, then I'm going to limit the amount of depth and texture that fur will have. And in the end, that painting will not have as much of a realistic finish as what it would if we take the time to put in all of the layers that's required. Now also throughout this tutorial you'll see the use of a colour wheel. Now this is something that I'm incorporating in my Patreon tutorials where I can explain to my members there how to select a specific colour or how to mix our pencil layers together with a combination of two or three colours to replicate what we can see in our reference photo. Now how to pick colours is one of the more common questions that I'm asked on all platforms, here on YouTube and on social media. So I want to make sure that I cover that in my Patreon tutorials. I don't make colour selection complex. I use a colour wheel but it's not anything that's difficult, it's a very easy method for breaking down which pencils we should be selecting and then you can really narrow it down very quickly. So if colour selection and how to mix those colours is something that is of interest, then again my Patreon is in the description below. I also have a Patreon library on my website where you can see all of the tutorials that are available there before you sign up. And the wonderful thing about Patreon is you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time, it's very flexible. As I'm building up more of the fur on the ear and on the face, you can really see how important it is to not only build up those layers that I've mentioned, but also to vary your pencil technique and the pencil strokes that you're creating. 
Now I have a tutorial here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels, I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. Now there I talk about a few things, fur length, fur direction and fur thickness. Now in terms of replicating that accurately, this is all in how we use our pencils. So maybe how sharp the lead is, how much pressure we're applying, even where we're holding that pencil, all of those things come into play when we're drawing fur. So if you're trying to create these longer pencil strokes, we do have to make sure that not only is that pencil in contact with the paper for longer, but that we're using the correct amount of pressure to get that line as thick or as thin as that fur texture requires. Now something else as well that's great about this portrait is there are elements here where the fur is out of focus, it's slightly softer. So you can see the difference in the two ears here. I had to use some softening techniques to help push that fur back with the understanding that I didn't over blend. And this is something that can happen very easily, especially with pastels because of how forgiving they are with working with that softer effect where you can blend many layers together. So I had to make sure that I avoided that in this situation. I want the background to be completely blended, that is perfect, but for the ear, I have to make sure that you can still see the pencil strokes. So if you are working on any portions of fur that are a little bit out of focus, my biggest tip there is don't over blend. You do still wanna have definition. So now that I'd worked on that and I've completed the other eye, I can now start working on the rest of the fur on the face. Now again, something that I talk about in all of my tutorials here on YouTube is at what order do you draw the fur? Now I'm not talking about the layers, I'm actually talking about the elements within that portrait. So I had to draw the ear first because the fur on the side of the face and at the top of the head here is going to be in front and overlapping the ear. So I had to draw what was behind the face first, going back to what I mentioned with the background, so that when I came in with my lighter details on the side of the face, I could overlap them on top of the ear. This is gonna to help to build up that three-dimensional shape of the portrait. So before I move on to the rest of the face, if this video has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel. So the one thing when I'm working on this section of any portrait, I have to make sure that I'm adjusting the pencil technique that I've just mentioned. So here, the fur typically is much shorter. If you're working on something maybe like a Labradoodle, um, a Cockapoo, those sorts of breeds, a Schnauzer, the fur around the nose and the muzzle area is longer, so of course this is going to vary depending on the animal that you're drawing. But a fox and animals similar to this, the fur on the bridge of the nose is much shorter than anywhere else on the face and the body. So I do have to make sure that I'm adjusting the pencil technique here to replicate that. If I keep my pencil strokes long, like what I've got around the eyes and the top of the head, I will make this part of the face look really fluffy. So I do have to make sure that I'm paying very close attention to that reference photo. So this portrait is on the smaller scale. It's only a six by eight inch, and I did it this size to show that when working smaller, as long as we use the correct layering process and pencil technique, that we can achieve lots of detail and still get that photo realistic finish. And although I have focused on colour for this portrait in the real time tutorial, it's the contrast here that's gonna have the most impact. If I don't get my darks really dark, like the nose and around the eye, and I don't get my highlights nice and bright, this will look flat. A prime example of this is the white section of fur that I'm currently working on. If I had this more of a pale, darker grey, this would not have the same three-dimensional feel. So I do have to make sure that the white fur still looks white, but that it's got depth to that. Now the biggest thing with white fur is it's never actually truly white. It does reflect a lot of colour and you will have quite a few mid-tone details that need to be added. And you're going to see the reflection of colour as we go through the chest part of this portrait. There are a lot of the green background that I need to bring up into this fur. Now this red fox only has a small amount of white fur there to draw. So if you would like to see how I like to approach white fur, I've got quite a few tutorials here on YouTube and I'll link a couple of those in the description below. 
the white fur is going to be very subjective to each reference photo. So white fur can often look completely different. We know it's a white animal, like a, let's say if you were drawing a Westie, we know that that dog would be white, but actually in that reference photo, it's very rarely white. So I do have lots of tutorials here that do show that. So as I say, I will pop them in the description below if they're of interest. So this portion of the body was actually quite different in terms of the fur texture. You can see that I'm already hinting at the lights and the darks and the way that they're separated. The fur starts to look a little bit clumped together. So I want to make sure that I've got those shapes in place. And as long as I focus on the pencil technique and just draw what I see in that photograph, where my lights and my darks are, I'll be able to replicate that in my drawing. Now that's something else that I talk a lot about on my YouTube tutorials is the placement of your highlights and shadows. So they are never random. Just like the fur direction, the highlights and shadows follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if you look at that highlight just at the base of the ear, that very bright highlight, that's separating where the ear finishes and where the neck starts. If I get that highlight in the wrong place, I'm gonna make it look like the ear is attached in a very different way, which will of course change the proportions of this fox and it will look a little bit odd. So we do have to make sure that we've got the highlights and shadows correct. Now, as I start working on the darker gray fur on the chin, this is a prime example where this is actually white fur, but because it's in shadow, there are not many sections that are actually white. Although I'm using a couple of white pencils for my highlights, my base layers underneath are very dark. If I don't get my base layers dark enough, my contrast is not going to be good, which will make that portrait look flat. Now, one problem that can happen is if you're using a pencil that you're fairly confident is the correct color and the correct value, so as in it's as bright or as dark as what you think you should be using, but it's not showing up on your portrait, that's a really good indication that your base layer is too light. If you darken your base layer, those pencil strokes will then be able to become visible because you've adjusted your contrast. Now, because all of the main elements that I've mentioned in this tutorial are things that I feel make the most difference to our artwork, I cover all of this in depth in my real-time tutorials. And now that I've zoomed out here, add in the whiskers, which are always the last element that I add to a portrait, you can really see just how much of an impact the contrast has. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel. I do also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of the content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can and I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube next week. As always, thank you so much for watching.